Since the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft conducted its historic mission, namely Crew Dragon Demo 2 in May 2020, the vehicle has set and kept a record that any space company at first glance would find embarrassing, that is becoming the safest crewed spacecraft ever built. This is exactly the most realistic evidence for the declaration of Gwyn Shotwell, SpaceX's president and chief operating officer. Astronaut and personnel safety is SpaceX's highest priority. It can be said that placing people as the guideline for all actions is the secret to helping SpaceX come up with breaking ideas, leading them to the top notch in the aerospace industry. On a winning streak, the company recently demonstrated another innovation toward astronaut safety that promises to reshape future spaceflight. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. On Thursday, March 21, SpaceX launched its 30th cargo mission, known as CRS-30 to the ISS for NASA. Over 2,721 kilograms of scientific supplies, maintenance equipment, two new coffee kits, fresh fruits and vegetables, and other food for the station's inhabitants are stowed aboard Dragon on CRS-30, a Falcon 9 rocket carrying an uncrewed cargo Dragon spacecraft lifted off at 4.55 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time from Space Launch Complex 40, SLC-40, at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The mission was the first cargo launch from SLC-40 since March 2020. Wow! What an impression! On the contrary, on the same day, another vehicle was not so lucky. The Russian Soyuz spacecraft encountered an unknown problem leading to a delay. Specifically, the Soyuz MS-25 mission was prepared to launch in the morning, but the mission abort was triggered at T-20 seconds after the second umbilical was retracted and prior to engine sequence start. No explanation yet from Russian flight controllers. The translated audio loop indicated launch would be delayed at least 24 hours. The NASA commentator said the next opportunity would be Saturday. According to the rumors, the abort was caused by the supporting structures of the launch table which did not move properly. Such an error is usually considered quite seriously because it could lead to several potential issues depending on the specific circumstances and severity of the problem. One of which is safety risks. Malfunctioning supporting structures pose safety risks to personnel working on or around the launch pad. If the structures fail unexpectedly during operations, it could result in injury or even loss of life. Thereby, there is no doubt that not only during the flight, but even before launch, ensuring human safety must also be emphasized. It explains why SpaceX added another layer of safety capabilities, but not in the spacecraft, in the pad instead. Indeed, on March 20, SpaceX's president and chief operating officer Gwen Shotwell shared a funny video that appeared to show her in an IV a suit taking the ride down the chute from Pad 40 Crew Tower in Florida. In the comment section below, many users expressed their interest in the video, highly appreciating SpaceX's efforts to protect the astronauts. To be honest, that escape chute at SLC 40 was tested once previously on February 26 and would be used in an emergency to help astronauts and ground crews quickly get away from the pad. The Lunar Starship will be equipped with four landing legs, similar to what was used during the space shuttle days. However, instead of riding a basket from the top of the tower, emergency personnel will slide down a chute that carries them several hundred feet from the rocket. What's more, this chute will also be used for Starship and its future commercial space flights. Therefore, Simplification is appreciated here, and of course, it's safer than sitting in a small basket up high. The team took commercially available off-the-shelf technology and applied it to the crew tower. Kiko Donchev, SpaceX's vice president of launch, wrote on X, You are trained on it the same way you are trained on using an emergency exit door on airplane. Only takes a couple of quick physical actions to deploy the slide, and anyone can effectively do it. This system will help us scale to bigger towers and spaceships. Think 100 people on Starship, Donchev wrote. As I said above, under the CRS-30 mission, Dragon's second-generation vehicle lifted off for the first time from the north end of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida. By the way, the new escape system could also get a trial run. Fortunately, everything went smoothly. No accidents were recorded. Bill Gerstenmeyer, 
SpaceX's vice president of build and flight reliability, emphasized that SpaceX was near the end game of certifying Pad 40 to support the Dragon mission. His saying was given during a recent post-flight readiness review leading up to Crew 8 astronauts launch on March 1. We would like to do a cargo flight first, if we can, and we think CRS-30 is probably the right time to do that, Gersten Meyer said, and the work's pretty much completed at the pad. Got some stuff to do next week, but we'll be in good shape for CRS-30. But before continuing, if you found this information useful, let's subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now let's go back to today's episode. The addition of new infrastructure at SLC-40 is considered a long-term solution for the traffic congestion in LC-39A. Both SLC-40 and LC-39A were hired by SpaceX to launch their vehicles. However, since the Dragon V-1 was retired, something has changed. In 2018 and 2019, LC-39A was outfitted for Cargo Dragon and Crew Dragon missions ahead of the company's first human spaceflight mission in 2020. Since 2020, all of SpaceX's crew and cargo launches to the space station have departed from there. Additionally, the launch cadence for Dragon missions was increased drastically. This year alone, the company plans nearly 150 Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy launches. What's an impressive number but also causes a big problem. When you're flying rockets every two or three days, the conflict between two missions in terms of the same launch slots is inevitable. Of course, we cannot share those burdens for SLC-40 because LC-39A is the only pad currently certified for human spaceflight. It explains why the soon upgrade at the neighboring Cape Canaveral Space Force Station to expand its crew launch capacity is so important. The company is nearly there. Last fall, SpaceX workers installed a crew access arm to the launch tower, a key piece of infrastructure that allows astronauts access to the Crew Dragon spacecraft. In the last few months, the equipment necessary has been outfitted on the launch pad to support launches of human spaceflight missions on the Crew Dragon spacecraft. This week, we saw the use of the newly installed launch tower and crew access arm at SLC-40 to load time-limited experiments and supplies into the Dragon cargo bay atop the Falcon 9 rocket. Historically, Pad 40 has kind of become our high-rate pad, Sarah Walker, SpaceX's director of Dragon Mission Management, said, we've gotten the time between launches down to just a couple of days. We've been trying to build up redundant Dragon capability on our two neighboring pads, Walker said. It gives us the flexibility that if there's ever a traffic conflict on 39A and two missions have to launch at the same time, and one of them is a Dragon, now we can move over to SLC-40 and prioritize both of those missions. SLC-40 is expected to serve a Crew Dragon launch with astronauts later this year. NASA is in the process of reviewing SpaceX's changes at SLC-40 to officially certify the pad for crewed missions. Their purpose is to have SLC-40 available in time for the launch of the next space station crew, Crew-9, scheduled to fly no earlier than August. It's good to have that redundancy, Steve Stitch, the program manager for NASA's commercial crew program, said. It's great to see the space travel industry growing rapidly and private companies like SpaceX making efforts to help bring humans closer to the dream of multi-planetary life. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.